Welcome to another Kiss Soft video tutorial. Today we're going to talk about more or less the de definitions and what the uh, load spectrum means in our Kiss Soft calculation software. So, first of all, we need to understand that users can input a load spectrum and the spectrum definition, speed, torque, power, are in reference to the driving gear entered in the rating tab. So if you open the rating tab, and you can see here you have a driving gear, the working flank of the gear, and the sense of rotation, okay? So in this case, uh, the right flank is the working flank, and the rotation is clockwise. And this is, this is based off of this probe. So as a probe is um, rotating, it, it's actually the right flank. You see the R and the L there on the... Uh, for the probe for the outer gear and the inner gear. This probe is actually the uh, the rotating um, component here and it's driving on this right flank, okay? So that's what this means. And what we're doing is the, the user, in this case the uh, designer engineer, is, is defining the driving gear and the working flank. This in turn defines the direction of rotation right here. Oops. Um, and in the above case, the original direction, if you can see here. So this is what we're using our basis as I go through this uh, little tutorial here. So in this case, we're, the gear one is driving. The working flank is the right flank, which means the non-working flank is the left flank. And the sense of rotation is clockwise. It's important that when you define the load spectrum, the user keeps in mind the original definition. We just went over that. We're clockwise. The right flank and um, the gear one is a driving gear. So you can understand that there's different load profiles that we can look at. And right here in the alternating bending factor mean, this is on your factor tab, you would define these types of different load profiles. So the pulsating is basically you have a one rotational direction with torque applied on the working flank. In this case it's clockwise and it's applied to the right flank. On the alternating um, operating mode, you have one rotational direction with torque applied on the working flank and the non-working flank. An example of this may be a uh, engine balance gear uh, because you have um, inertia that's driving uh, the balance shaft, but you have uh, uh, compression and combustion events that are driving torque on both flanks of the gear. So you have a positive torque and a negative torque, which is driving both the working flank and the non-working flank. Oscillating operating mode is an example of I'm driving forward, now I'm driving backwards. Now I'm driving forward, now I'm driving backwards across this um, load profile. So it assumes bidirectional rotation with torque applied on the working flank and the non-working flank. And again, it's it's with respect to your rating tab and what flank is, is driving, clockwise or counterclockwise. So it's important to understand, every time I say it, you know, right, I'm saying it's important for all of these, but it is really important to understand how the load spectrum is considered to be negative if non-working flank is placed under load. So in the load spectrum, and this is something you can look in the manual, the coefficient of torque, if it's positive, and it's positive for speed, then you evaluate this as a positive bin and your working flank is under load. If you have a positive torque and a negative speed, your working flank is still under load. So this means that the torque is actually driving the speed, okay? And it's going in reverse direction. Now if you have negative torque and positive speed, you've actually flipped the load to the non-working flank. And this is how we evaluate this as negative. And then if it's both negative and negative, the non-working flank is under So think of the non-working flank when you have a negative torque. The, the speed is, uh, is controlled by the torque. And then if it's non-working flank here with both negative, then the torque is controlled by the speed, if that makes sense to you. So, so here we go. Several different load spectrum profiles. So you can enter your own load spectrum and with different types as well. We just talked about those. So here's a, kind of an illustration. If you're positive on your speed, right here, 
your clockwise rotation, and you're positive on the torque, it means that your torque is negative rotation or uh, counterclockwise to the load. So it's reactive, okay? And it's loading this right tooth flank right here, as you can see that. If you enter a positive torque and a negative speed, the load still applies to the working flank. However, the rotation is reversed. In this case, think of it as this negative speed is being driven by the positive torque. Okay? The torque is driving this gear in counterclockwise rotation. And you have right tooth loading. Okay? The right flank. This is your working flank. The same up here. This is your working flank. And that's from your original definition on the top. Right flank, right here. Okay. If we enter a negative torque and a positive speed, the loads are applied on the non-working flank. Okay. The speed and torque are essentially in the same rotation. However, the speed is holding the gear uh, constant at some RPM, and the torque is driving it. So the torque is driving the rotation of the system, and that loads your non-working flank. Okay? And if you have a negative torque and a negative speed, the loads are applied to the non-working flank. The rotation of torque are reversed. In this case, the left flank is low. So here we see you have counterclockwise rotation and negative torque. Which is re so the speed is driving the system, and now this is a reactive torque on the left flank. Okay? And that's what that means. So, an example uh, pulsating load profile. If you entered your own, this is just an example of a standardized load spectrum, this one you can grab. But what you can see here is in this pulsating direction, we have positive torque and positive speed, which means we're loading the right flank. There are no alternate. Um, loads on here or negative loads and there's no oscillating. This is this is a straight RMS load and we're looking at these uh, pulsating loads. If we look at an alternating load profile we have to go to the factor page and grab this alternating bending factor and we have to change it to this Annex B 6336 and it will automatically populate this uh, your YM factors, and it'll, this what basically what this does is we're actually defining how much load in the positive is on the working flank and on the negative flank. In this case, you can see 100% of the load here is applied, and only 80% of this load, of the reference load that we have, is applied to the uh, non-working flank. And this whole time, the speed is constant. So that's two examples. Under the oscillating load profile, what we're going to have is um, this 25% bin number one represents this first loaded profile. The torque is positive, the speed is positive. So we're working the right flank or the not or the working flank. Okay. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we have a negative torque and a negative speed. We are now loading the non-working flank, 100%. Okay? So as we load this flank, we're calculating that here. This portion of the oscillating load profile, uh, this 25 plus 6 uh, plus 6 on the speed and the torque, is this version or this portion of the uh, load profile. And then this uh, bin number 3, minus 1, minus 0.6, is this last portion. So this minus 1, minus 6 is loading the non-working flank, minus 6, minus 0.1, minus 1. So 2 and 3 are minus non-working flank loaded um, tooth flanks, and 1 and 4 are the loaded right flanks, or the working flanks. So that's how you would set those up if you had uh, oscillating loads like that. So maybe you look at a sector gear that's driving, you know, a valve or something, 200 degrees to the right, and then it has to come 200 degrees to the left. And you would uh, enter it that way and make those calculations. So that's the load spectrum. Uh, just a quick overview. For Kissoft, 
And um, we're going to call this part one, and then I'm going to go through an example in part two, how we enter this in the software. If you have any questions, of course, you can uh, email me, ty.warner at kisssoft.com. And um, if you're looking for a test version of the software, then you can go on to kisssoft. That's www.kisssoft.com, and you can request a test, a 30-day free test license. Thanks for watching.